Welcome to When They Popped. Let's rewind to a simpler time together and dive deep into the music, movement, and mania behind our favorite Y2K celebrities and trends. Hosted by Kelsey and Mary, it's time for another episode of When They Popped. Hello and welcome to When They Popped. I'm Kelsey. And I'm Mary. How you feeling, Mary? Oh my God, I'm like shaking. I can't believe that just happened. We just got off our call with Darren. You guys, we are freaking out. We just spoke with our first guest ever for the pod. We talked to the man, the myth, the legend behind the most iconic choreography of Y2K, Darren Henson. And even if you think you don't know who Darren is, you do know his work. You are familiar with his work because he did the choreography for Bye Bye Bye. So like this man is etched into your brain, into your muscle memory and pop culture history books forever. Yes. Not only did we have a blast from the past with Darren, he also revealed that he has a documentary coming out on April 20th called Darren Stan Grooves, The Untold Darren Henson Story. And that'll be on allblack.tv for streaming starting on April 20th. And I could not be more excited to get even more tea and stories about Darren's life and how he got to where he is today. It was literally just so lovely. And oh my, we just can't touch enough about how much we love Darren and how lovely he was. Also how good he looks. He literally looks the exact same from the 2001 Darren's Dance Grooves DVD. (laughs) Like he has not changed. So before we jump into our interview with Darren, we did want to touch on some quick news and updates. Womp womp. First things first, we do want to give a quick Amanda Bynes update uh, because a lot of you reached out to us after news broke early last week that Amanda Bynes has been placed on a psychiatric hold shortly after she announced she would not be appearing at 90s Con. It was reported that Amanda was wandering in downtown LA and flagged down a stranger for help so she could call 911 because she recognized she was in the midst of a psychotic episode. It's been reported since that allegedly perhaps her boyfriend kicked her out of their place. And we've seen some videos of her walking around downtown. LA looking quote unquote out of it allegedly by some fans. So if you've listened to our Amanda Bynes episode, you know, we are Amanda stands in this Mm -hmm. house and we will share any updates as we learn them. But in the meantime, we're just really hoping for the best for her. I agree. And, you know, just on the topic of Amanda, but pivot to a lighter subject, i.e. 90s con. I also just read that um, Aubrey Plaza was actually at 90s con as a fan. And I'm so bummed we missed her, but it truly speaks to kind of how in the nostalgic era is right now. Celebrities are flying to Hartford, Connecticut to see their favorite stars from back in the day. I love it. Who wouldn't want to go to Hartford, Connecticut in a beautiful <laughs> It wasn't March. bad. I loved it. <laughs> and another lighter topic, April's starts this weekend wow where the f is the time going (laughs) and april in this pod is backstreet boys month that's right the boys as we've mentioned at length are celebrating 30 years of backstreet boys so obviously we need to recognize that here on when they popped so we will be launching a three-part series on the backstreet boys talking all about the boys before backstreet their rise to fame and we've been working really hard for you guys to get some juicy stories Mm -hmm. that you have probably not heard before You think you know, but you have no idea. This is the diary of the Backstreet Boys. What a (laughs) fever dream. Anyways, I feel like that's all we wanted to touch on right now. I'm just too excited. I just want to get into Darren. He was more wonderful than we probably could have ever imagined. And we were just so grateful for his time and his willingness to talk to a couple of Y2K heads like ourselves. He also brought his MTV VMA Moon Man. So you'll hear us kind of freak out. And that's because... (laughs) It was his hype man in the frame the entire time we were talking to him and we were just starstruck at him and starstruck at the award. It was just crazy. But if you hear him mention, you know, this little guy right here, he's talking about the VMA. Award, yeah, the he Moon casually, it, it was so cool. He thought to bring that with him for the call. And he just was casually like, look at who my guest is. And I was like trying to see, I was like, who's there? And then I realized it was his Moon Man. But he also showed us some behind the scenes photos, like Ugh. printed out four by six photos that he had with the Spice Girls and Britney Spears and NSYNC. He he went through the photo album for us oh and we're just God. so grateful for his time. So without further ado, let's get right to it. Enjoy our chat with Darren Henson. Hello, everybody, and welcome to When They Pop's first 
ever guest episode featuring legitimately one of the biggest stars and creative forces behind the iconic music videos and tour choreography we associate with Y2K, Darren Henson. Darren is a leading choreographer with work spanning top recording artists like Britney Spears, NSYNC, J-Lo, Christina Aguilera, Spice Girls, Deborah Cox, Prince, Drew Hill, Jagged Edge, and George Michael. The list goes on. You have seen Darren's work, whether you knew it or not, because you all have NSYNC's Bye 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 choreography etched into your brain. And that was Darren. His work on the video earned him the MTV Video Music Award for Best Choreography. And following this success, Darren released Darren's Dance Grooves, a dance instruction video which sold over 5 million copies. Darren is also a successful actor and has appeared in Showtime Soul Food, Stomp the Yard, Life Support, among many other television roles. And he currently stars in the critically acclaimed TV show BET's The Family Business. But wait, there's even more. Darren is also an accomplished author and has published several books. We are chomping at the bit to talk to Darren and ask him all of our and our listeners' burning questions. Darren, welcome to When They Popped. We are so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for catching up with us today. Wow, it's so wonderful to be here. (laughs) And thank you for that amazing intro. That's wonderful. Did I do all of that? (laughs) <laughs> yes. Darren, I feel like it's important you know that Mary and I grew up across the country from each other, me in New England, Mary in California, and we both woke up on Christmas morning in 2001 hoping that Santa brought us Darren's dance grooves. Luckily he did, and we spent our respective holiday breaks doing our best Britney crazy and bye 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 in our basements. You truly are an inspiration to us all. That's so awesome to hear. I'm so blessed to to hear those stories and just you know, kind of relive them through through people's um, yeah. conversations that I meet all over the world, and it's just it's really really humbling, and I'm I'm so thankful for the opportunity to do so again with you. Uh, well, we love reliving it with you because these were truly the best days, at least speaking for myself, of our lives to this point. It was just such a great time, a great era, and getting back to you, I just want to start from your beginning. You're you're from the Bronx. You attended Prep for Prep, a nonprofit organization to prepare New York City's top minority students for success in education and life. How important was that in your life and your career trajectory? Was that a pivotal factor, would you say? Yeah, it's 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 incredibly important. I think learning how to give back, learning how to be mm-hmm. a perpetual student. Um, learning how to offer someone else an opportunity um, that they may not necessarily um, have developed yet or have is, is always key. I mean, it's something, I mean, not, not with prep for prep, but so many other organizations that I have been involved in throughout life um, afford people the opportunity to, you know, receive the blessings that they may, you know, desire in their heart. And so as a catalyst for that, it's something that's important for me to do because each one teach one, we can reach one. Ooh, I like that. And tell me a bit about growing up in the Bronx and how you first got interested into dance. Wow. Are you ready for this? Okay. So rewind, rewind. So I, I grew up in what we consider to be the true home of hip hop where you had rapping, dancing, clothing style, DJ, and graffiti, the true five elements of hip hop. And I grew up uh, in, on, on a street called Noble Avenue in the Bronx, which was only a few streets away from where Africa Bambata and the Zulu Anniversary Jams and the Rocksteady crew were, were you know, doing, doing what they do, DJing, developing hip hop, breaking. And so I grew up in the midst of that. And to me, it was it was the best pace, place to grow up and the best time to grow up, in my opinion, because it really gave me the skills that I needed. It gave me the toughness that I needed to, to be in the industry that I'm involved in. And at that time, you had, you know, the Jacksons, you had James Brown when I was a child, you know, you had... MGM musicals were amazing. You had, you know, Seven Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. You had West Side Story. You had The Wizard of Oz. You know, you had Danny Kaye. Like, you had amazing performances 
that I grew up watching that helped develop the choreographer and the dancer, dancer first and then choreographer that I became. And, you know, it's just a wonderful kind of throwback to to think about. And and I love it. And and there are times where I sit down and watch those musicals today and 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 still enjoy. I mean, I still watch Annie, right? We we get to still watch musicals like Annie and some of those dance steps and dance numbers are amazing. I actually stole a couple of dance steps from Annie in some of my r- routines. I really, I truly did. I can't remember which routine it was, but I remember stealing that it's a hard knock life. I stole um, an eight count from that and put it in one of my choreography pieces. Yeah. <laughs> so amazing. You, th- so amazing. That's so funny because you are the first person that I've spoken to that has talked about Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. That was one of my favorite movies growing up. I used to try to do the dance from the barn scene like by myself when they're all dancing together. That's such a great movie. Amazing musicals. And, you know, Russ, he played Riff in West Side Story. You know, he was in that as the youngest brother, right? It's so great to see him there when he was younger. And then he played Riff in West Side Story. That might have been something you didn't know. Yeah. No. So he yeah. th- is that Russ Tam Tam Tamblin yes. or Gideon? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's oh, so my... great when you watch it. It's like, man, yes, you know, it's like a part of my history. You know, he's one of the 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 giants whose shoulders that I stand on. Obviously, this kind of touches on my next question I was gonna ask about inspirations as you were growing up, and we kind of touched on that there. I'm sure there were others, but also any mentors that kind of got you going on the path that you're on? Yeah, it's it's really interesting because it all fused together. Growing up in, in the Bronx, you know, it was, it was a relatively incredibly creative place to grow up in. Um, and then, you know, at that time you had shows like Soul Train, American Bandstand. You had, you had again, you had artists like the Jacksons, the Silvers, um, James Brown performing all the time. You had the Commodores, um, I mean, you had you had Teddy Pendergrass. I mean, they were great musicians. And so I I made them my mentors. I literally, um, you know, used to, you know, as children always do, we have these incredible imaginations. And, and I made Michael Jackson my friend. I made the Jacksons my friend in my head. And and I used to dream. I used to have vivid dreams about them. And so for me. They they were my mentors, and and the reason I say that is because I watched them on television. I used to I learned to dance by watching um, the the TV through a mirror, so I could actually do the dance steps with them. True story. And then when I got older, um, in my teenage years, I met a man named Frank Hatchett, um, who was one of the owners of a place called Broadway Dance Center in New York City. And I used to always stick my head in the windows and watch his classes. And he came out and he goes, are you a dancer? And I go, yes, I am. And he goes, you want to take class? And I said, yeah, but I don't have the money. He goes, if you want to take class, you show up here tomorrow on time, prepared to dance. And he let me take class for free. Frank Hatchett, rest in peace. And he created a um, a jazz. He was a jazz teacher who had this style called VOP, V-O-P. And um, he was one of the first mentors um, that I met that assisted me in my journey to learning the infrastructure or the base of jazz dancing. And I fused that with my street style, which ultimately became Darren's Dance Grooves. You touched on this a little bit already in speaking about how you manifested that goal of dancing with Michael Jackson. And your latest book, Life's Teachable Moments, teaches the power of manifestation and planning for your success. How did these tools help you get your big break? And can you tell us a little bit more about how you got into the choreography industry at the start? Well, it was it was one step at a time. And um, it was... It was always a trajectory, and everyone should hear and know this because this is a true story. When when I graduated high school, I didn't want to go to college, um, but I was focused on 
working with Michael Jackson, period. My, my, my trajectory, my focus point, my bullseye was Michael Jackson. When I graduated high school, I went and joined Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. And I traveled the circus for a year on a train. We lived on a train. And um, we moved the next year to Japan. We were in Japan the next year. So we traveled one year um, in the United States. The following year, it was Japan. We lived in Osaka and we lived in Tokyo six months at a time. And all of it, literally all of it, practicing my dance style. I used to watch the movie Breaking, I don't know, countless times, right? Just hundreds and hundreds of times. You know, I, I, I watched uh, Michael Boogaloo Shrimp Chambers, right? You know, Turbo in the movie Breaking. And um, ultimately, Shabadoo Quinones would be one of my greatest mentors when it came to dance. Rest in peace, Shabadoo, who ultimately um, gave me a huge break when I was 21 by introducing me to a um, director named Ron Link, who was bringing a show to Broadway called Stand Up Tragedy. So because Shabadoo introduced me to Ron, I was casted as Carlos Cruz in the Broadway show, Stand Up Tragedy, and was on Broadway at the age of 21. And so it was so amazing because, again, it was one step at a time, one belief system at a time, one faith at a time that led me to the breaks that I got. What was my big breaks? Well, when I was 16, I met DJ Scott LaRock, who became you know, the founding member of Boogie Down Productions while I was still in high school. He was my first manager. Then I graduated and joined the circus. Ringling Brothers was the biggest attraction at that time. And then I met, you know, downtown Julie Brown on Club MTV. I was a Club MTV dancer, which led me to, you know, meeting Shabadoo, who introduced me to Ron Link, which put me on Broadway, which introduced me to Gregory Hines, like it was one step at a time. And it was so amazing because I always, I always, I always asked the questions that, that would lead to the answers of what is my next step? What is my yes? What is my greatest step that I could take to move me forward in the space that I needed to be in right now. And I'm thinking about it as I think about it and I go back and I'm remembering the feeling of going, trust yourself, Darren, trust yourself, Darren. And it was always leading me to my next space and place that would afford me the opportunity to the next success. And hindsight's twenty twenty. In that moment, did you ever have doubts or uncertainty? You know, as someone who's going through that herself professionally now, you know, what's my next step? Where am I going next? No doubts. He knew. I had such a healthy ego that said, I can do anything and I'm going to work with Michael Jackson. Like literally every step that I took was to get to work with Michael Jackson. And there was never a doubt in my mind. I always asked the questions that would lead to the opportunities, to knocking on the right doors, to asking the right questions that would lead to the right answers. I never doubted myself. And that's something that I find people don't do today. Like, I believe that I could. And I did. And I don't, I don't say that with a negative ego. I say it with a healthy and a positive one that tells people who are watching this, you can and you will if you believe that you can. The person who believes they can and the person who believes they can't are both right. That confidence that you speak of is so important. I feel like so many of us struggle with imposter syndrome. And I feel like social media feeds into that a lot because it's the constant comparison game. So thank you for that reminder. If you can dream it, you can do it. And I love that quote that you said about, you know, the person who believes they can and the person who believes they can't, they're both right. That is so powerful and such a great reminder for our listeners. So you've been working, you've been building on your success. And here in the pod, we like to share when stars popped or when they realized they really made it. What was your holy shit, I made it moment? 
It happened every time. Every time was a whole <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you about one amazing time. So I'm choreographing for um, Deborah Cox. And, you know, she has this huge song, um, Nobody's Supposed to Be Here Out. And there's this, there's this white girl with her head pressed up against the, the um, you know, the studio glass. And she has all these dancers and people in her room where her face is just pressed up against the glass looking into my rehearsals. We used to uh, rehearse at a place called Stepping Out Studios. Well, guess who that person was? It was Britney Spears. So her assistant knocked on the door during one of our breaks and said, you know, my artist, you know, really loves your style and your choreography and would love to meet you. Well, at that time, she had baby one more time out. And I said, okay, I'd love to meet her. I met her. It was Britney Spears. And then I wind up working with her right after that because she loved my choreography so much. True story. And you know, it's so funny. I'm on with you guys right now. And my documentary is getting ready to drop next month. It's called Darren's Dance Grooves, The Untold Darren Henson Story. And, and I'm actually, I got to veer away a little bit from some of the conversations because some of the things that I'm telling you about in the actual documentary, Darren's Dance Grooves, The Untold Darren Henson Story, will be on the All Black Network. Um, next month, April 20th, where I also have another television series called Double Cross, um, which is on that network, which is a division of AMC. I'm so excited about it because it literally has everything that you want to know about Darren Henson and Darren's dance grooves in it. Like it's so phenomenal. And I'm, I'm so happy and excited because I know what it looks like, right? So you bet you were pretty involved in the creation of it and Everything. Oh, yeah. I produced it. It's all footage that I own. Um, and the other footage that's in it is, fo- you know, footage that um, we got uh, permission to use. Um, and, you know, you know, you're going to see everybody in it, you know, uh, everybody in sync, Britney, Deborah Cox, Spice Girls, Michael Jackson, Prince, like everybody's. In it. It's so awesome. Well, you deserve it. We are very excited for that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, On that note, so many of us millennials know you from your iconic choreography. And in your own words, how would you describe your style? My style was um, a street style, right? I'm a popper, right? Like when everybody saw me popping, like when you see me dancing and stomp the yard, right? Like I'm a popper. But what I did was I fused my street style with jazz, because again, I wanted to work with Michael Jackson. And I noticed that the street dancers that worked with Michael Jackson, they were only in small segments of his videos. Like they were in quick segments. I wanted to be one of the dancers that danced with him throughout the video, right? So I learned the jazz style and I fused it with my street style. So I would be able to know everything. and. You know, so when I was able to get to the point where I actually worked with Michael, it wasn't just in a popping section. It was throughout the whole performance. And and that was one of the things that I I prepared for. So when the opportunity came and I actually got to work with Mike, I worked with him throughout the whole song, not just one small section. So it's really a, a street style fused with jazz that that I call you know, Darren's dance grooves. Like that's my style. It's Darren's dance grooves. Can you explain what was that experience dancing alongside Michael Jackson like? In one word, phenomenal. In one word, incredible. In one (laughs) word, that's a compound word, everlasting. It, It just, it still takes my breath away. It still takes my breath away. And, um, You know, I have two of his hats. I have his Billie Jean hat and I have his smooth criminal hat that was given to me. And it's one of my prized possessions. I'm just, I'm still in awe of Michael Jackson. I'm still in gratitude to Michael Jackson. 
and I'm still in Thanksgiving for Michael Jackson. I mean, that's such a, an accomplishment. And um, I literally like tell my mom, I'd be like, he's worked with Michael Jackson. He's worked with Prince. Like, I feel like everyone can appreciate someone that you've worked with to an extent, um, which speaks to you and your, your style and your, your reach. I worked with <laughs> Prince, like Prince. It's the bread and the butter, right? <laughs> <laughs> Each and every time. From Michael Jackson, I learned um, equally what I learned with Prince in different ways. You work, 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 and work some more. <laughs> and strive for perfection. And you don't take anything less. And with Prince, I'll tell you, uh, w- with Prince, I learned that things aren't better. They're just different. And there's a story I tell in the documentary that is that is wonderful about something that happened with Prince. But what I can tell you is that working closely and directly with both of them was afforded me the opportunity to ask more of myself than anybody could ever ask of me. That way it would always prepare me for whatever anyone else came to me with because I put myself through such um difficult times. It's like it's like going to the gym and asking for, you know, two more reps. Come on. You get and you're ready to yeah. give it up and you're going, no, I'm gonna push through two more, right? That's what builds mm-hmm. that muscle. And it was the same thing working with them. They asked more of themselves than anybody could comparably ask of them. You have mentioned some of the biggest stars of all time in our conversation already. Michael Jackson, Prince, Insane, Britney Spears. Were you ever starstruck working with these huge stars? I'm, I am starstruck just hearing these stories. Literally, I, I was always, and I mean, I was professional, but I had to like, you know, I had to, I had to hold it inside. I mean, I would be like, yes, when I walked out of there before I got there, when I was going to work, like, yes, you know, because I was going to work with the greats. Can you tell our listeners, how do you come up with choreography? You know, Just to reference two of some of your most iconic numbers, Bye 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 and Britney Spears is Crazy. You know, what goes into coming up with that routine? What was your inspiration? I don't know. And what I mean by that is I listen to the music. The music always told me what to do. I never thought about dance steps, ever. What I did was I played the music and I would just start to move. And then I would like go, no, that doesn't feel right. And then I would go, uh, if you think about that move and you drive me crazy, right? Where we push through, right? You, right? You, right? It was like, that feels good. All right, I'm keeping that. And then I would do it again. All right, that feels good. I'm keeping that. I'm keeping that. I'm keeping that. I'm keeping that, right? Like all of it felt good. And then I added it on top of, on top of, it was always the music. I never thought about dance steps. Probably the only thing that was a cheat sheet for me was um, genie in a bottle, right? Like genie, right? Like that's a cheat sheet, right? So you do the genie first. But other than that, no, I just listened to the music. Same thing, you know, my love don't cost a thing, 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 right? It's just like, you just feel it. You just feel your way through. You know, you don't think your way through with dance. Dance is spiritual and you just, you feel your way through. Our follower, Literal Trash 2004 wanted to know if you know the concept of a video before coming up with the choreography. Does that impact the routine at all? Yeah, yeah. You know, one of the things, um, and I'll tell you a story behind this. One of the things um that that I was hired to do outside of of choreographing was writing treatments. And so I wrote treatments to to videos and concepts. So if you think about Jennifer Lopez Love Don't Cost a Thing, I choreographed that in Sweden when I came up with those dance steps. We were in Sweden doing the MTV Music Awards before the video. And I was hired by I was hired by her um and her manager, uh Benny Medina. And I wrote out a concept for Love Don't Cost a Thing about making Jennifer like this, this, this huge uh, diplomat and her dancers were secret service agents, right? And we flew Jennifer in on an airplane onto the stage. And I wrote that truth, 
right? I wrote that tweet. Yeah, absolutely. Same thing with Jennifer Lopez on the American Music Awards, where she was in this Parisian street scene, right? You can look it up, right? She's in this Parisian street scene. She comes down in this elevator. She has on this beautiful French outfit. I wrote that treatment, you know? And it was, it was, it's great because I was in creation mode. So I was choreographing and writing treatments at the same time. And so, you know, I was on double duty quite a few times. Same thing with Enrique Iglesias' Bailamos. You know, I wrote the treatment for Bailamos, um, which I kind of stole from Smooth Criminal. <laughs> <laughs> it was loosely inspired. If you look at the videos, loosely inspired by Smooth Criminal. But I was smart enough to steal from the genius. <laughs> Did you have any idea that Bye Bye Bye, a song that we argue all the time on this pod, is more famous for its choreography than even the song itself, would blow up the way that it did? Wow, thank you. Um, no, I no, I had no idea. Um, you, you know, what's really incredible about that was I was I was nominated in 99 for an MTV Music Award with Jordan Knight for Give It To You. We lost to Ricky Martin's Vida Loca. Of course, it was amazing. Ricky Martin, amazing. Vida Loca, huge song. And I was like, okay, I've worked with Michael. I've worked with Prince. I've done, I'm done. You know, I've worked with Britney. All of that stuff came out. I was like, I'm done. Johnny Wright calls me and goes, you know, we need you to do one more for us. Because, you know, I, I, I was... I was Instinct's choreographer. I introduced them through the Disney special that they had, their first Disney special. Darren, we talk about that Disney special for Instinct all the time on this pod because that was when Instinct popped. And that was the special that really catapulted them to fame in the U.S. Exactly. Yes. Right? That is so cool that you were behind it. And I know that their dance moves and their charisma on stage was the reason, the recipe for their success. So, wow. Kudos to you for honestly being a driving force behind InSync becoming a thing in the States. That's incredible. When I think back about that, you know, it's it's such a celebratory and, and pop culture time. But Johnny was like, we need you to do this one song. You know, they're released from the um from the uh, you know, the contract with Lou Pearlman. And I was like, nah, I'm good. And it was like, no, 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 no. We need you to do this song. And so, of course, it's Johnny and, of course, it's the guys. And so I get Bye 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 and I hear the song and I'm like, this is funky, right? Yeah. And we're in Las Vegas. And so they were like, well, we've got to perform this song in two days. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and so they just wanted to introduce a snippet of it, like literally like 30 seconds to one minute. And I'm like, are you serious? And they're like, yeah. And they're, they're there. And I'm like, okay, everybody, get out of here. Go. Bye. Leave me alone. And Corey got with everybody looking at me going, okay, what's the dance steps? Get out of here. Come back six, eight hours later. And that's what happened. They came back and I created a, a portion, a one minute version of Bye Bye Bye. And it was performed and people lost their minds. Was the portion like the original choreo that we all know and love? Yeah, absolutely. It was the Ain't No Lie, Bye Bye Bye. And then we had to do the video. And then I put the smack down and gave them the rest of it. And it was, <laughs> you know, Bye 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 was born. Alley Cat Studios in Los Angeles. And, you know, you guys saw the making of the video and, and all of that. And, you know, it's it's so amazing when, when I see, you know, because I took pictures that day while we were... Um, while while we were in rehearsal and some of those pictures mm -hmm. have been circulated throughout the years and when i and when i look at it i'm i'm literally still in awe because it's become you know arguably one of the big dance steps ever yeah. in the world <laughs> like it's it's in the same conversation with thriller with you know rhythm nation it's in the same conversation you know with with those massive, you know, dances and songs. And I'm just, again, incredibly humbled that, you know, the most high would, would allow me to be that person to introduce that to the world. You know, I'm just thankful and I'm humbled that, you know, people all over the world are still doing it. You know, Ted Lasso, it was a, a performance of Ted Lasso 
that that just performed Bye Bye Bye. It was a, a performance of oh. Rebel Wilson in her movie on Netflix. You know, she recreated, you know, using some of my dance steps. You drive me crazy. Crazy, yeah. You know, and so I'm just, I'm so grateful and thankful that that my dance steps and, and you know, have reached, you know, millions of people, you know, all over the world. Well, I think I told you in my original email to you that Bye 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 is still my best party trick that I whip out and my boyfriend has me whip out at family functions to show everybody that I know the NSYNC dance. So it, it really is, has staying power and it's just an incredible piece of work uh, on your end. So we appreciate you, but um, you said you took six to eight hours to come up with that one snippet for the boys for NSYNC um, when they kind of teased Bye Bye Bye. But one of our followers, Red Fox, wants to know how long it typically takes you to come up with a routine. Is it six to eight hours or is it more than that when you're doing a full song? Well, it depends, right? Like you can feel your way through it, but at the same time, um, it's like Give It To You. Before the Give It To You song, before the one that you got to see, I had like five different versions of it because I wasn't satisfied with it was it was good, but I didn't feel like I could do better. I could feel better. It, it was more like this feels good, but I, I I had to just keep listening and listening. So it's when I go stamp of approval, this is done. I I keep changing it until it feels perfect, until it feels right, you know. And and so it's like. It could take two hours or it could take eight hours or it could take two days. Like I never show or showed anyone what the choreography was until it was what I wanted to present. I don't know if we'll ever be perfect, but at least you strive for it. And so I felt great about all of the projects that I introduced. That was my stamp of approval. When you got to see it, that's what I said. Okay, the world gets to see this. It may have been something else. You know, it, it it could have been a different move, right? But no, it was the move that everybody got to see because it felt right. When I said, how does this feel? Does this feel like what I want to present? And when it was the yes, it's like, okay, now I teach it. All right. That, that makes sense. Another question we got a lot, a lot of our followers were very interested in hearing about what it was like working with Britney Spears. You know, she seems like someone who's a very talented dancer. It seems very effortless to her, better than a lot of her background dancers. We just would love to hear your take on, you know, working with Miss Britney Spears. Britney was a sweetheart. And again, really, I started working with her during the Baby One More Time, right? I put together the Baby One More Time tour. Um, so I, I got to meet her in her in her stages of, you know, in her, what I consider to be her junior stages. And so she was just a sweetheart, you know, she was like my sister, you know, there were times where, you know, she'd cry on my shoulders and she'd be like, did I do a good job? I was like, Brittany, the show was great. You know, she wanted to be the best. And so she was always concerned. And, and I loved that about her because it showed that she cared. She didn't take anything for granted. You know what I mean? And so I, I loved that she she cared so much that she was emotional and sentimental about it. But she was always great. She was always humble and always sweet and always ready to try something new. That's what I remember, that she was always ready to go. Let's try this. And she was she was about having fun, you know, had the biggest smile, and the greatest sweetheart laugh. And um just everything that I, I remember in a person who loved what they did. You've worked with some of the biggest musical talents in history, all these amazing stars. Is there anyone you haven't worked with who you wish you could collab with? You know, I would love to, I would love to dance on stage with Chris Brown. I would love to choreograph for just because, you know, she's from New York and she's just, she's the queen of R&B, Mary J. Blige. Ooh. Um, but when it comes to the desire for being satisfied, 
I'm completely satisfied mm-hmm. with with my career. Like, you know, working with Chris Brown would be fun because he's this generation's, you know, person. And so yeah. it's just like to be able to get to dance with with that person that's this generation's person would be great. You know, we were in Stomp the Yard together, but yeah. we weren't in the same scenes. Okay, here's another listener question for you. Black Bubblegum Pod, shout out to Jasmine, wants to know if there is another choreographer that you are inspired by or really appreciate their work. Wow. Um, you know, I always go to Jerome Robbins for me. You know, I'm again, I'm a lover of old musicals and 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 their style. You know, I love um Jerome Robbins for me, like I mean, it's just his stuff still stands today. If you look at anything, Jerome Robbins, it still stands today. If you look at the dance style, again, I'm going old. People have got to do their research. If you go old, um, Eleanor Powell. If you go, um, you know, Fred Astaire. Like, I incorporate now when I'm doing stuff, like stuff that Fred Astaire did and just put my spin on it now. You know, Gene Kelly was funky. If you look at the Nicholas Brothers, funky. Like, I just, I really like the the, the old style. Dance today is beautiful. It's beautiful. There's a, a company called Complexions um, that is amazing. Um, and I love the way that they present their artistry. Again, everybody, do your homework complexion um um it's really amazing how they present this style of movement told in a contemporary way um but in terms of contemporary kind of hip hop dance um you know it's very musical musical but in my opinion it's missing spirit it's it's missing feeling. It's so mechanical, you know, that it's missing the feeling in between the beats that we get to enjoy. And so again, it's really creative. You know, I I give much respect to the dancers and the choreographers of today because it's it's today, it's now. Um, but I miss some of the feeling of the vibe in between the beats. Let it, we used to call let it live. Let it, let it marinate. Marinate. I like that. <laughs> let it simmer. I, that was actually kind of tied to one of my upcoming questions and I might get some hate for this, but do you, I feel like dance has changed a lot from, you know, two thousands until now. And again, This is just my opinion, but I feel like we expect a little bit less from a lot of our performers, you know, our pop stars. We don't see them doing full on routines. They're standing there with the microphone. Uh, Do you notice that? Am I crazy? Well, you drive me crazy. No. Um, (laughs) Good way. I'll take it. Um, Yes. (laughs) No, I I think this is the thing. And this is the best way that I can put it. You know, my my wife is actually bringing something and, and I'll show you what I mean. Um, the Darren's Dance Grooves box cover and some pictures that I have with Britney Spears and NSYNC. And I have a a huge dance library, right, from from over the years. So she's bringing that. The reason that I say Uh, that is you have dance, you have music. Those are two different things. What happens is, is they're so closely connected to the music I'm like, where's the dance? Because if the dance becomes the music, then it's no longer dance. It's just music physically. And so this is where we talk about let it breathe, let it simmer in between, right? Let it let it simmer, let it breathe. Because if I hear if 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 the music's going boom boom ba boom 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 ba ba boom, and the dance is going boom boom ba boom 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 ba ba boom. But we don't feel that boom, boom, ba ba boom in between. Then it's just like we're looking at the music. I want to enjoy the dance in between. So what happens is 
I think they're over dancing now. Um, and yes, I think that performers have gotten lazy a little bit. I think that they're not doing the work, which is why we're not seeing a new level of performance. Um, I think, you know, put the mic down, put the cordless mic on, and let's get back to performance. But we miss it because we're missing the music that gave that to us. We're missing the rhythms and the musicality, the positive vibrations in the music. See, we're, we're, we've, we've lost the fun in the music. We've lost the love in the music, right? The music is very, very heavy today. The music is very negative today. When you think about Darren's dance grooves, right? Like you think about You Drive Me Crazy in a great way. When you think about Bye Bye Bye, it was talking about freedom and 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 growth, right? It you know Jordan Knights, I'm gonna give it to you. It was like love. It was just about love. When you when you when you think about Bye Bye Bye, right? This is in the uh, studio where I was ooh. choreographing Bye Bye Bye. Oh like, my gosh! It was freedom. It was fun. The love that you got. From the from the Spice Girls, oh, the hugs and the love. Okay, for all of our listeners who can't see, Darren is literally pulling up photos of the Spice Girls just casually back. Like, what is going on? Hugging I him. I can't believe that this is your life, Darren. This is incredible. It was just great feelings. When what happens is, is you have this heavy music today. Sure. And it's so heavy and it doesn't bring positive vibes. So people aren't mm -hmm. dancing. And to me, sorry, everybody, but twerking does not make dance. <laughs> That's only one move in dance. A right. whole song right. should not be twerking. And so, yeah, do I Amen. think as a person who's helped create and build pop culture, would I like to see people get back to dance? Yes, I would. Would I like to see people perform big dance numbers again? Yes, I would. And I, I, I'm hoping that we're moving our way back there. I'm hoping so. Me too. I still watch old Britney tours, probably ones you were involved in, just to like see that again, because I don't see it in concert anymore. The Even the girls don't really put on a show like she used to. And it's kind of sad, but I'm glad I'm not crazy. I'm not driving you crazy in a bad way. And I'm on to something with that, yeah, <laughs> but absolutely. I don't want to take all of your afternoon. And we just, we really want to touch on a few more points and get into, especially Darren's dance grooves. You know, this video that sold over 3 million copies. Five. How did this come into 5 million? Oh my five God. Million. Okay. I need a, I need updated. I need <laughs> updated numbers. How did this, was this your idea? How did this come into fruition? 100% mine. Um, you know, Darren's dance grooves. And again, as I said, I keep a, a, a huge binder with pictures, right? That's my dance binder. Um, and, and always have. And so, you know, that photo album with all my, you know, with everything dance in it, it, it consistently reminds me of what my focus was and is. Um, and it's always to inspire. And so Darren's Dance Grooves was born um, first as a um, place that you could go to dance. You know, they were workshops. And, and then I started to do, in 2000, I was on a television series called Soul Food. And so we had to shoot the show in Toronto nine months out of the year. So I wasn't traveling anymore as much because I was in Toronto shooting the show. And I thought, wow, you know, how do I get to the dancers? And I thought, I can't be everywhere at one time, but a DVD. And so I said, I want to be able to teach anybody dance and I'm going to. And so I had the idea to do Darren's Dance Grooves, which was actually a convention, the Darren's Dance Grooves convention. Um, what we saw in the commercial, when you saw the sea of dancers, that was from my convention. Well, I decided to make it a VHS at that time and a DVD. 
And so that's how the Darren's Dance Grooves DVD was born. It was born from the Darren's Dance Grooves convention, which I will be doing again this summer. Oh, no way. Where at? Can you tell, gonna, can you tell us? Yeah. Yes, we're, we're going to go to New York. Mm-hmm. We're going to South Carolina. We're going to Memphis, Tennessee. We're going to Los Angeles. Um, we're going to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So the Darren's Dance Grooves conventions will be back full swing um, in July of 2023, of course, after the documentary is out, we're gonna we're gonna be right back on tour with um, some of the nostalgic dance steps that I taught, you know, the no. pop stuff. So you're gonna be able to learn from Darren Henson the same way I taught Instinct, the same way I taught, you know, Spice Girls and Britney and J Lo. Yep. You're gonna be able to take class from me. Well, I'm going to be there. So this is very exciting news. In in my opinion, I think Darren's Dance Grooves was like one of the first times that a choreographer was really recognized by the public and had like fans. And did you notice that the release of this DVD catapulted, catapulted you to another level of fame? Yes. I dreamed of the idea of it happening. I didn't know it was going to happen. It was just a dream. And so for me, the dream itself, as it was happening, was a wait a minute, what is happening moment. Like constantly, like every time I saw the commercial on television, it was like, what? It was always (laughs) a new wow moment, right? And it became the biggest Christmas item in 2001. And then everywhere I went, people were talking Darren's dance grooves. And I was just like, how is this possible? But what I realized I had tapped into was the same thing Michael had tapped into, the same thing Prince tapped into, the same thing the Jacksons tapped into. They tapped into the heartbeat of the world. It was something about wow. bye bye bye, the artist, the music, the song, and the dance. Yeah. that tapped into the world and the vibration and that world frequency. And Darren's dance grooves did the same thing. What I did was I took everything that everybody had already loved and I gave it back to them in a different way. That was going to be, key word, fun. I know when we talk about Bye 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 and Darren's dance grooves, you made learning how to dance these iconic routines fun, but also accessible. Like back then we didn't have YouTube to watch a music video 180 times through to learn the choreography and you broke it down. And as a backstreet girly, the fact that you got me to dance to in sync, like alone in my basement and put on a performance for my family was a really big deal for me back then. Well, you know, what's so amazing now that you say that, you know, on mm-hmm. on um, Instagram right now, I mean, it's everybody's played it. Everybody's seen it now. The Backstreet Boys are actually doing Bye 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 with members of NSYNC. When have you ever seen any of the pop groups doing the other pop groups dances? Mm-hmm. Like that doesn't happen. I should be in the Guinness Book of World Records for that. <laughs> right now. Seriously. Like it's I so, like, when I saw that, it was like, <gasps> Honestly, you deserve a Nobel Peace Prize because you brought warring fan groups of NSYNC and Backstreet Boys together to have a kumbaya moment. Thanks to your incredible choreography. This is so true. It's so amazing. Mm-hmm. And again, it was always about fun. As Michael Jackson and Prince said, it's always about love. And I just wanted to be one of the catalysts to continue the bridge of bringing love and mm. harmony and dance and fun mm. and music to people so we can all be be one. And that's what I want to do this mm-hmm. summer again with the Darren's Dance Grooves Dance Conventions. I want to bring everybody back to love again. I want to bring everybody back together again. That's what I want to <sighs> do. Let's stop fighting. Let's stop the differences and let's find a common ground and have fun together and dance together again. Again, Darren, we promised we would only take an hour of your time and we have just had such a nice time talking with you. We wanted to kind of talk about soul food and how the family business was just renewed for season five and what you hope to, um, what's next for you. And you've kind of told us some of that already, but, you know, we'd like to give you the chance to to tell us, you know, what's next for Darren Hansen. Thank you so much for asking me that. This is so exciting. Yeah. Um, 
I'm <laughs> using films and television shows now. I just completed as as the first time for me as an executive producer on a movie called Mississippi Christmas. Um, okay. As you as cool. you know, we just got, yeah, like, oh, we just got <laughs> greenlit for fifth season of the Family Business and greenlit for the fifth season of Double Cross, which I'm also a producer oh. on that television series. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm so excited because again, my documentary, Darren's Dance Crew, told Darren Henson's story will be on the all black network, um, on April 20th. Like I'm so excited about Uh, that because it's going to bring everybody together again. Remember dance has no color. We don't mm -hmm. talk about color. We just dance. We just listen to music and have fun. And that's what I'm so proud of of doing, bringing everybody from every background together. And um, I have a clothing line, which is called God's Billboard T-shirts. And so I'm so thankful for that because if you go to Instagram and you can see it on Instagram, it's God's dot billboard T-shirts. Like everybody all over the world um, is wearing the shirt. And you'll see so many wow. pictures and so many types of people wearing the shirts. And it's called God's Billboard T-shirts. It's God's okay. Billboard T-shirts.com, okay. um, which is the website um, where you can get my books and the T-shirts. But I'm so happy because they're positive affirmation. You get to wear something that is positive and not something that is cursing or negative or sure. you know just bad vibes on it. It's all positive affirmations. And so it goes along with my books, like Ain't That the Truth, Life Teachable Moments, and all of the other books, Intimate Thoughts. And so I'm just really thankful that people are on Team Darren Henson. I'm so thankful for this interview. I'm thankful that I can spend time with you, um, (sighs) ladies who are so beautiful. Um, Oh, (laughs) <laughs> great, this great energy and and just <sighs> wonderful questions in the interviews that I'm so thankful for. And it was an opportunity again to show, <sighs> you know, one of my best friends, my my moon man, oh. ain't no lie, bye bye bye, best choreography. <gasps> moon man. I kiss him all the time. And, oh, uh, I would too. Oh my God, you guys, Darren just nonchalantly brought his MTV VMA Moon Man into the frame, and we are freaking out. Oh, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> um, I'm just, I'm thankful for the opportunity. I'm thankful to NSYNC, Prince, you know, Michael Jackson, the Spice Girls, George Michael, SWV, Deborah Cox, um, High Five, CNC Music Factory, Trilogy, <laughs> just everybody yeah. that I want. J-Lo, you know, thank you to Johnny Wright for pulling me back in there and him telling me, you know, we need you for this. And I'm just, I'm, I'm thankful for everybody. Well, I I bet they're thankful for you because you are a a Y2K icon, whether you want to admit it or accept it or not, you are. And so we are so grateful for you and your time. Thank you so much for being such a light for us and for your time to chat with us today. Thank you so much again for stopping by when they popped. We cannot wait for your documentary and for your conventions this summer. I've been so excited for this. So thank you. It was my pleasure. Ain't no lie. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye. Whoa, that was probably the coolest thing ever. (laughs) (laughs) I'm shaking. I'm like physically shaking. I... Oh, Darren's just so lovely. I hope you guys enjoyed this conversation. This was our first interview on the pod. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. We're hoping to do more of these in the future. Yes. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you for submitting your questions. We appreciate you all. Thanks so much for listening. And don't forget to tune in next week when Backstreet Boys Month starts. And be sure to follow us at When They Popped Pod to keep up with us and all the Y2K pop culture happenings. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye. Bye.